Hello, welcome back to Everyman Prepping. Today we're talking about pressure canning and pressure canning meats. I've recently done videos on, you know, stockpiling food now. Uh, food's never going to be cheaper than it is right now. Uh, stockpiling water, long-term food storage in, in uh, five-gallon buckets and Mylar bags, uh, and the sugar shortage that's coming up. So uh, I'll put, um, in the cards above, I'll put uh, links to all those, and you can watch those after you finish uh, watching this video. Also, please like, subscribe, uh, ring that bell, um, share this with other people that are you know, either into canning or thinking about canning. A lot of people are afraid of pressure canning meats, but it's the simplest thing. If you have a pressure canner, the simplest thing you can do and have a long-term storage uh, of your meat. So also comment below if you have ideas on um, pressure canning, what you do, uh, because um, everybody has a different idea. And that's what I want to tell you now. This is how I pressure can. Uh, works for me. You know, this is, uh, all my opinions on pressure canning. Um, just so you two please don't uh, come after me. There, you know, the government has its own standards of how you should uh, can your food. So I'm going to put, put a couple links to some sites of how they suggest to do it. Um, that way you can research that and come up with your own plan. One of them is the National Center for Home Food Preservation. I'll link that. And the other one is the USDA Canning Guide. I'll link those two. But if you ask me, you know, trial and error is great, but this here is what I use mostly. This is the Bell uh, Canning Blue Book, and it's basically like a canning Bible. And what it has, this is mine. You can see I got other recipes I've put in there, yellow stickies, I've put notes, I've, you know, what I've changed in recipes. I use this for water bath canning, pressure canning. So definitely get yourself one of these. I can link it below so that you can uh, pick one up if you need it. But everybody who cans, whether, like I said, whether it's a water bath or pressure canning, you need one of those. So why do we want to can meat? Pressure can meat, that is. Never water bath can meat. Uh, you want to pressure can it for, first of all, it's uh, shelf stable. So you have a lot of meat in your freezer, it goes down. You say, well, I have a generator, or solar backup. Well, what happens when you run out of fuel or the generator breaks or you run out of sunlight? You know, this shelf stable meat here, this will last one, two, three years. I had three year old canned meat the other day, perfectly fine. Uh, your mileage may vary, but this stuff is great. You store it in a nice cool place, anywhere in your house, the closet, the prepper pantry. Very long term, easy to do. Also, you're gonna save money. So, the, you know, the canned meat you buy in the tins in the store and the sausages and corned beef or whatever you want to buy, spam. Super expensive these days with inflation. If you buy, if you're not buying organic and you're just buying regular meats and canning them, you're going to save a ton of money. Uh, even if you go organic, you're probably going to come out even or even ahead. Um, so that's a great thing. Another thing is portion control. Does your family eat, you know, a pint and a half worth? Do they eat a quart worth? Is it just one or two people? Do you just want a pint at a time? Portion control is great because that saves money too. So that's another reason you want to pressure can. And then you can control the quality of the meat uh, that you put in there, how much fat's in your ground beef. Uh, do you want skinless chicken, bone, you want skin in, do you want bone in, bone out? You control what you eat, exactly how you want to flavor it, how you want to season it at the time. All that's controllable. And lastly, a lot of people don't think about this, it's a backup pet food supp supply. Chicken, uh, cats love the chicken, you know, dogs will eat anything. Um, you know, so if you have other pets, I'm sure they'll eat some of the stuff too. So it's a backup in case you run out of pet food. The animals can eat what you eat. So what do we need to pressure can? Let's start with the basics. You're going to need jars. Okay. Uh, these are quartz here. They're from Ball. I use Ball or Kerr. Um, I, I rely on them. Never had a problem with them. You know, these are the lids I use. You know, they're the Ball lids also, you know. Kerr's also great. They're one company actually. So they're owned by the same, I think Ball owns Kerr basically. But I haven't used an off-brand. If you've used off-brands and you enjoy them, put in the comment below with where you get them uh, and the brand you like. Um, I've just never used them and I've had great luck with this. So we have our jars, our bands, our meat, our seasoning, and the most important is your pressure canner. This is an all-American 21 and a half quart gasket list. See, it's metal on metal seal, no gasket, which I love because there's nothing to wear out. Um, you know, basically it lasts forever. It's metal on metal. It's, um, you know, it has a couple, has a relief valve and, you know, the pressure valve, pressure gauge. These small things can wear out, but as a good prepper, you know what you did? You went out and bought duplicates of that already. At least that's what I've done. That's what you should do. Buy anything you can wear out these three parts, buy duplicates, have them ready to go. This thing will be outlive you and you can donate, or you can give to your, you can donate it, give it to your children, whatever. They're, they're great. So you need a pressure canner. Get big one, big enough. That'll handle what you want to do. Now, it is the most expensive part. This could be three, four hundred dollars new. I know it's very expensive, hard to get into, but you need it. If you can't afford it, you're going to look for used ones. Uh, thrift stores, garage sales, um, you know, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, all that stuff. Find one. If if that doesn't work, 
Talk to your neighbors. Do any of them have a pressure canner? If so, would they be willing to borrow it? You know, show you how they do it. Um, you know, just give yourself a hold of one. You'll never regret it. After you start doing this, you're gonna you're gonna love pressure canning meat. So let's say you have all your parts. We're gonna talk about how to do the three types of meats I have here that I do, um, which is uh, ground beef or, or pork for sausage, sausage links, and chicken. I've never done pork besides the sausage. I haven't done pork chops or shoulder or ham. I haven't done any of that, so I, I don't have experience with it. Not too much into it. I mostly go with chicken. But let's start with the ground, the ground stuff, the ground beef or the ground sausage. Uh, what you need to do is you need to brown it first. I'm not going to do a live demonstration, cooking, all that. There's plenty of videos that. I'm just going to go through how I do this really quick. So you're going to brown it first, drain off as much fat as you can, and then you see when you can it, there's going to be a layer of fat in there, and there's some above. Both of it's fine. The texture is a little grainier, a little crumblier than if you just, you know, eat it fresh, but it tastes great no matter what. It tastes, it tastes almost perfectly like it was new. You want to do it uh, stacked about, so when you put it in there, you want to do about inch, inch and a half of head space here from the top. You know, I should point this way, I guess. And then you just put the lid on, put your band in, and you're going to put it in here. You know, follow the instructions from the manufacturer about how to can. You most of them you have to vent for 10 minutes, then put your weight on. And I'm going to tell you, 90 minutes in this pressure canner for what I do, 90 minutes does any meat, whether it's ground, lynx, boneless chicken, chicken with bones in it, 90 minutes. Take care of everything, it'll be safe. So just remember that, 90 minutes. So that's your ground products. Now, let's go, and if you don't have ground beef and you do the, um, you wanna do some you know, steak or just you know, brisket and chunks, do like one inch pieces, pack it in there tight, put any seasonings you want in there at that time, salt, pepper, whatever, garlic, put it in there, lid, band, 90 minutes. Sausage links, super easy. These you do raw. The last two items I do raw. That's the only thing I cook is the ground stuff. Even the uh, beef chunks, I, I don't, I don't um, cook those beforehand. They're going raw. That's how, that's how this is so simple. This is simpler than vegetables, soups, anything. So sausage links, they go in there raw. You just pack them in standing up, tight as you can get them in there. Lid, or band, lid, band, 90 minutes, done. Uh, by the way, all these, after the 90 minutes, give it like five minutes, to, you know, probably maybe a little longer, depressurize, open it. Put it on the counter, don't touch it for 24 hours. Make sure that seals well. Test the seals afterwards, then store it away somewhere nice, cool, dry, prepper pantry, good for years. Last of these, my favorite is chicken. I love doing chicken. Chicken is easy, it goes into many recipes. Um, it's uh, it's uh, simple, you can eat all kinds. So this is, uh, I, I prefer chicken thighs. Uh, I do the, the skinless because it's less fat. If you wanna do skin, no big deal. I do boneless because I can cram more in here. So this here is boneless, skinless, chicken thigh, and all this liquid, I added, you don't add no liquid to any of this. This is all from just the chicken cooking in there. Makes a great broth. If you want to use it for chicken soup, it works great for that. You know, your seasonings can be put in there all ahead. You can just open up and start eating it, heat it up and start eating it. Once again, you just pack the meat in there tight, raw, inch and a half from the top, and then you, uh, uh, you know, can it 90 minutes, boom, done. If you have the drumsticks, just put them in here long ways, Rotate them, you know, fat part down, fat part up, you rotate them down, you'll fit a ton in there. Chicken wings, breast, all that. Like I said, bone in, bone out, skin on, skin off, doesn't matter. <clears throat> Just shove it in there, pack it tight, lid, band, 90 minutes, done. It doesn't get any easier than that. 24 hours, you're all set. Um, you have your, your, your can of meats ready to go. So th and that's all there is to it. It can't be simpler than that. Uh, in, like I said, I prefer it over the freezer a lot of times because, you know, either the freezer's full or, you know, it could have an accident when you're away and all the meat goes bad. This stuff is in your closet, pantry, barn, garage, wherever it's nice and cool, long term, and you're set. So please try it. I think you'll really love it. It's a great source because you can have your long term stored beans, rice, things like that. And, you know, beans are a good source of the protein, but you need another source of protein. And this is almost like fresh. You can't beat this protein source. And like I said, lasts a long time, two, three years, you should be fine. Uh, just try it. Now, when you do can, make sure you try it. You know, open, after you can it, wait a couple weeks, crack open a jar of each type, try it out. You're gonna see how good it is. You're gonna, you're gonna be amazed how easy it was and how many recipes it can go into. And, and you can also, you know, somebody's sick, what's better than chicken soup? Give them that, ready to go, and they're taken care of. So that's all I have. If you have any suggestions below on what you do for pressure canning meat, please share it with the community. And if you have questions, 
you know, put it down below. We can answer all your questions or point you in the direction to give you an answer. And, you know, that, that'll be something that, um, you know, we can help the whole community out. So enjoy the weekend. Start your pressure canning. Get your meat. Until next time, keep your ear to the ground and head on a swivel.